Where do the Dutch really come from? For centuries, this has been one of Europe's biggest mysteries. Some say the Dutch are the true descendants of the ancient Frisians and Batavians, the proud tribes who once resisted the Romans. Others believe their roots go even deeper, back to the first farmers and seafarers who settled along the windswept coasts of the North Sea thousands of years ago. Now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have found is shocking. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to explore the hidden truths of Dutch DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think the Dutch are the direct descendants of the ancient Frisians? Drop your answer in the comments. In 2009, a piece of a Neanderthal skull, nicknamed Krijan, was found beneath the North Sea. It belonged to a man who lived more than 50,000 years ago, making him one of the oldest known inhabitants of the region. He wasn't alone. The Low Countries, today's Netherlands, Belgium, and parts of northern France, were once home to thriving Neanderthal communities. They hunted reindeer and mammoths across frozen plains that are now underwater. Modern Dutch people still carry about 2% of Neanderthal DNA, small traces of those ancient encounters. It's a reminder that before the Netherlands became a country, before even the idea of Europe existed, this land was already part of a much older human story. Around 40,000 years ago, something changed. A new kind of human, our kind, entered the region. They brought new tools, better weapons. Their descendants would spread across Europe. But in the Netherlands, their story would take a strange turn. When scientists analyzed DNA from those early people, they found something unexpected. Their genetic traces almost vanish later in history. It's as if these first modern humans were a fleeting chapter, later replaced by new waves of settlers. Still, they left something behind, not just bones and tools, but a way of living close to the water, adapting to nature's moods. That adaptability would become a Dutch trait for thousands of years to come. As the Ice Age ended, Europe transformed. Forests grew, rivers flooded, the great herds disappeared. The Netherlands turned into a land of wetlands, full of lakes, marshes, and soft soil. For the hunter-gatherers who lived there, life became harder. And then came a revolution, one that would change humanity forever. Farming. Across Europe, new people were arriving from the southeast. The first farmers, descendants of those who had domesticated plants and animals in the Middle East. They brought seeds, livestock, and a completely new way of life. For a long time, scientists thought these farmers simply replaced the hunter-gatherers. But in the Netherlands, something different happened. Here, it wasn't a story of conquest, it was a story of blending. This slow merging of worlds, between farmers and foragers, created the foundation of what would later become the Dutch people. Between 5300 and 3400 BC, a new culture emerged in the wetlands of the Netherlands, the Swifterbond culture. These people were the bridge between the old and the new. They were still hunters and fishermen, but they had begun to plant crops and raise animals. They made pottery, built semi-permanent homes, and traded with neighboring regions. What's fascinating is how local their DNA was. They weren't migrants. They were descendants of the original hunter-gatherers, slowly evolving their lifestyle. And they weren't isolated. Archaeologists found signs of contact with early farmers to the south, exchange of goods, ideas, and eventually, genes. Around 5300 BC, a wave of farmers from Central Europe reached what is now the Southern Netherlands. They brought new crops, wheat, barley, and peas, and new skills like animal herding and pottery. But when they arrived, they didn't destroy the local cultures. Instead, they settled nearby and traded with them. For centuries, these two worlds, farmers and foragers, coexisted. Slowly, their families blended. Their children carried both lineages, the deep hunter DNA of the north and the farming genes of the south. Genetic studies show this mixing wasn't random. In many places, the local women married into farming families, passing on their mitochondrial DNA. 
the genetic link from mother to child. By around 4000 BC, most people in the Netherlands had become part farmer, part hunter. It wasn't an invasion, it was evolution through cooperation. This peaceful merging created a genetic balance that would remain stable for thousands of years, one reason Dutch DNA shows such deep continuity even today. As the centuries passed, these early communities became experts in living with water. They learned how to build dikes, canals, and raised settlements long before recorded history. By 3200 BC, they were already part of long-distance trade networks. Amber, flint, and even early metal objects were exchanged across the North Sea. These were Europe's first true maritime people, the ancestors of the sailors and merchants who would one day explore the world. And the DNA from this period tells a clear story. Despite contact with other regions, the Dutch population remained mostly local. Their genetic core didn't change, only their technology did. This mix of innovation and continuity became the signature of the Dutch identity. They didn't need to conquer new lands to evolve. They adapted their own land until it yielded everything they needed. But then, around 2500 BC, something happened that would reshape not just the Netherlands, but all of Western Europe. A new culture appeared, known as the Bell Beaker culture. Named after their distinctive bell-shaped pottery, these people brought advanced metalworking, new weapons, and, most importantly, a new genetic lineage. They carried what scientists call steppe ancestry, DNA that originally came from the grasslands of southern Russia and Ukraine. These were descendants of the Yamnaya, a nomadic people who had spread across Europe a thousand years earlier. In most regions, this steppe migration completely replaced earlier populations. But once again, the Netherlands was different. Instead of total replacement, there was blending. Another fusion of worlds. The local Neolithic people and the incoming Bell Beaker groups mixed. The result was a powerful genetic and cultural hybrid, one that spread from the Netherlands into Britain and northern Germany. This population carried the R1BY DNA lineage, which today dominates much of Western Europe especially among Dutch, English, and Germanic peoples. The Bell Beaker period marks the birth of the modern Dutch genetic profile, the point where old European hunter-farmer ancestry fused with steppe warrior blood. They became seafarers, traders, and metal workers. After the Bell Beaker period faded, a new chapter began, one that would shape Northern Europe forever. This was the Bronze Age, the dawn of metallurgy, trade, and powerful tribal networks. The people living in the Low Countries, what we now call the Netherlands, began to craft tools and weapons from bronze. This was more than just technology. It was a symbol of progress, of identity, and of control over nature. These early Dutch ancestors traded amber, salt, and metal with Britain, Scandinavia, and Central Europe. Archaeologists have found bronze swords, ornaments, and even burial sites filled with status symbols, signs of emerging social hierarchies. But genetically, something remarkable happened. Despite all the cultural exchange, the core Dutch DNA barely changed. The Bell Beaker mixture, the blend of local farmers and steppe ancestry, remained dominant. It shows that while ideas and goods moved freely, people didn't. The Netherlands became a crossroads of culture, not a place of conquest. This period marked the birth of a distinct Western European identity, strong, independent, and deeply tied to the land and sea. By 800 BC, bronze gave way to iron. Communities grew into organized tribes, each with their own customs, languages, and trade routes. In the Dutch region, two major cultural worlds began to take shape. In the south, tribes had strong Celtic connections, influenced by trade and contact with Central Europe. In the north, along the rivers and coasts, the people had closer ties to Germanic cultures emerging in Scandinavia and northern Germany. This division between north and south, between riverlands and highlands, became one of the defining patterns of Dutch history. But these weren't isolated worlds. They traded, intermarried. In fact, 
some of the earliest forms of Proto-Germanic language likely developed during this time, blending Celtic and Northern dialects. Then came the Romans. Around 57 BC, the Roman legions under Julius Caesar reached the Rhine River and met the tribes living there. The Romans never fully conquered the Northern Netherlands. Instead, the Rhine became a natural border, the edge of the Roman Empire. In the south, Roman cities and forts rose, places like Nijmegen and Maastricht. The people there began to adopt Roman customs, build stone houses, and even serve in the Roman army. Genetically, they mixed with Mediterranean soldiers and settlers, adding small traces of haplogroups J2 and E1B1B, common in southern Europe. Meanwhile, in the north, life continued as it had for centuries. Germanic tribes like the Frisians and Chaussi traded with the Romans but remained fiercely independent. They kept their own gods, their own language, their own bloodlines. So by the time the Roman Empire began to fall, the Netherlands had already become what it would always be, a borderland of civilizations, where north and south met, clashed, and blended without ever truly breaking. When the Roman Empire finally collapsed, the Old World dissolved, but the Dutch landscape didn't stay empty for long. In the south, a new power rose. The Franks. They were a Germanic people who united tribes under one banner and eventually built what would become the Frankish Empire the foundation of modern France, Belgium, and Western Germany. In the north, the Frisians and Saxons held their own, thriving through seafaring and trade along the North Sea. These groups, Franks, Frisians, and Saxons, form the three ancestral pillars of the modern Dutch people. Their genetic footprints still dominate Dutch DNA today. The Franks brought structure and organization, kingship, law, and Christianity. The Frisians brought maritime skill, independence, and trade. The Saxons brought hardiness and endurance from the rugged north. And together, through war, marriage, and alliance, they blended into something new. A people defined not by conquest, but by cooperation. Then came the Vikings. From the late 700s to the 1000s, Norse ships appeared on the horizon, sometimes to trade, sometimes to raid. The Dutch coast suffered and prospered from their presence. Cities like Doristad, near Utrecht, were burned, rebuilt, and burned again. Yet trade never stopped. Vikings married local women, settled in coastal areas, and left small but lasting genetic traces. Modern DNA studies show that northern Dutch populations, especially in Friesland and Groningen, carry a higher percentage of Scandinavian markers, haplogroup I1, associated with Norse ancestry. It wasn't a massive invasion, it was a quiet merging. Over time, Viking influence faded into the Dutch bloodstream, blending seamlessly with local Germanic roots. But their spirit, exploration, seafaring, daring, would live on in Dutch culture for centuries. You could say the DNA that once guided Viking ships later guided Dutch explorers across the oceans. By the time we reach the late medieval period, around 1400 to 1500 AD, something extraordinary had happened. The DNA of the Netherlands, from the ancient farmers, the Beaker warriors, the Frisians, the Saxons, and even the Vikings, had stabilized. Despite centuries of war and migration, the genetic makeup of the Dutch people barely changed after this point. It's one of the most stable genetic profiles in Europe. Modern studies show that Dutch DNA today still mirrors that of their ancestors who lived here 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. That's why, when scientists analyze Dutch genomes today, they can trace clear regional patterns. Northern provinces carry stronger Scandinavian and Frisian markers. Southern provinces show Celtic and Frankish influence. Central regions, a blend of both, form the genetic heart of the Netherlands. The history of Netherlands itself, from ancient Frisian tribes and Germanic settlers to Viking raiders, Roman traders, and global explorers, every chapter has left its mark on the Dutch genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of the Dutch people, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and discovered Dutch ancestry? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your blonde hair, blue eyes, 
or that Nordic look that runs in your family. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and Todzines, goodbye for now.